Hey, it's Peter Gregg, Miami, Florida. I'm using the M50 with the 22 millimeter lens. Sit back, relax. You are about to watch a Peter Gregg video. Something warm, human, and wonderful happens when you watch Peter Gregg. All right, this lens is starting to bring this camera into the modern age. The lenses that I used before this, I wasn't very happy with. No, I wasn't very happy with them at all. <laughs> However, the uh, 22 millimeter F2 lens, which is what I'm using right now, is making it a little bit more acceptable. Uh, what's the settings? Uh, I'm at 1 50th of a second at F2.0, because that's the widest I can go on here. I'm hand holding this, obviously, and my ISO is 1000. So that is, this has brought us down from an ISO of 5,000, 6,400, down to 1,000. So now this is the area where this sensor starts to shine and do a good job. Now, I know, I'm rocking you, sorry. All right, so uh, I've got the camera set to manual because uh, I don't like the camera handling uh, the white balance. As a matter of fact, a better white balance is right here. Um, actually, this is the new right white that I'm working with, which is a different version of um, a better white balance. So that's just for me when I get back to the computer to uh, tune it in. So uh, I had, do have image stabilization on, but it's just on. It's not in the enhanced mode. The enhanced mode makes like a rocking of uh, almost like a jello-ish effect, effect, you know, when they go... Uh, when they zip back and forth to see the jello effect. Well, that enhanced mode does that. Only if you use it correctly, it seems to work out all right. So I did walk around the backyard uh, with the enhanced mode on the last time. So if you want to see what that looks like, you can look at what that looks like. So uh, what else do I have? I have the camera set in neutral because whenever I pick up a Canon camera, first thing I do, boom, I set the uh, color profile to neutral. I pull down uh, the, uh, the contrast all the way as low as it'll go. I bring down the uh, sharpening, not quite all the way, but pretty close to all the way. Uh, I would say maybe one or two up all the way from the left side. Saturation, I bring it down one or two. Uh, you'll have to test it to, make, to see what you like. And then the color tone, which uh, accentuates the reds in my face, uh, or the, the greens, yellows type, of colors, I pretty much that leave that centered and centered, and that is why I put this up by my face. If I put the camera in the right spot, now the 22 millimeter lens is $250, which is cheap. It's a cheap way to get into this camera and make the camera come into an area where we've expected the 80D, the 77D, and the other uh, cameras that have the similar sensor, the 24 megapixel sensor, uh, to operate. The only thing is this is rather tight. So Canon made a really good camera, but really squeezed us by, I'm choking, <laughs> no I'm not, uh, by making it so that there's not many lens available, lenses available for this camera that do, let me, there we go. Uh, sometimes the Santas back there uh, try to fool this camera more so than the Sony. So this is image stabilization set to on. So it's taken the 22 millimeters and it's even cropped it further. So let's say you're going to put this camera on a tripod or something and you didn't need to have image stabilization. All right, let me change it and show you. See how close my face is? Look, look around here, this side and this side and stuff like that. I'm going to change it to image stabiliz stabilization off. Then I'm going to change it again to image stabilization enhanced. I'll tell you each time. So I'm going to turn the camera off, then turn it back on and it'll be image stabilization just on, not the enhanced version. And what you're looking for is to see how jittery it gets, number one, because I'm hand holding this, not on a tripod. It's right there, I could touch you, see? Uh, and uh, I'm gonna turn the image stabilization off, which is gonna give you a little wider area around me for the 22 millimeters. All right, let's try it. Hi, I'm back, here I am. Uh, let me tap on my face. It just does a better job when I tap on my face. Uh, so, what do we got going on now? I turned image, stabiliz image stabilization off. No, no more image stabilization. So everything is still set to manual. I'm still at 1 50th F2. I didn't change any of that stuff. But if I walk around, uh, if it gets into a darker part of the room or something to that effect, you're not gonna see the camera step in to help. 
uh, because uh, I've got everything set to manual. So if I'm in a darker area, it becomes darker. And if I'm a light, in a lighter area, it'll become to the proper lighting. So if I want to get artsy, I could come over here. Uh, let's go around. I can get near the tree. I could put me in the rule of thirds uh, over here on the one side and have the tree over here and make a nice looking uh, picture. So that's what we got going on. So let's see. That's the wrong Santa. I don't want that Santa, Santa's face in. There we go. I can't get it out. All right. Okay. So now that becomes a nicer image. And I would probably have to make it brighter because it's a little bit dark over here. There's no light to put on my face other than the softbox, which is way over there. So since this, sat this is a Saturday morning and I'm just recording uh, for fun, uh, the, the camera's got me curious because it should be able to do a really good job and I haven't been able to get it to do that. But now we're getting into it. So now I'm getting curious. How about the 50 millimeter? Uh, this is a $100 lens. Just the 50 millimeter $100 lens. Now let's see what happens when I put that lens on. And I'm going to probably have to tripod that because it's going to be way, it's going to be up my nose with a, never mind. Okay, <laughs> so I'll probably put that on the tripod and turn image stabilization off, which it already is. So let's see what a normal $100 lens will do with this sensor because we haven't been getting on that well so far. All right, so let's change it to the 50 millimeter and see what happens. So this is the 22. First, it was image stabilization on. Now it's the image stabilization off, which reduces, uh, uh, which reduces the crop factor that the camera does. And now we're going to do the 50 millimeter. I'm going to leave the stabilization off, but the 50 millimeter is like a sleeper lens. For $100, it makes any of these little cameras do a really good job because it goes down to f1.8. So let's put that on and see the difference because now I'm getting excited. This is starting to look good. This camera's starting to excel and it's $699 with the free Crepola lens. Okay, it's not a bad deal, is it? I think I would probably pick the SL, but uh, let's talk about that after I put this camera on a tripod because my hand is getting tired. Okay, I got the 50 millimeter lens on the camera now and it's all the way back. I had to take the Sony off of its home tripod, uh, which is usually set up with the Sony a7 III right there. Uh, so now, uh, just because we changed the lens, I'm gonna put this up here just for the heck of it uh, in case I need to tune this in a little bit. So this is the 50 millimeter lens. Uh, and it's actually a lens everybody should have. The Canon 50mm 1.8. Let me see if I'm set to 1.8. Uh, no, I was still set to uh, f2.0, which is what the, the last lens. This is what that lens looks like, by the way. It's a small, tiny little booger. I would call it a pancake lens. Very small. So I now have it f to uh, f1.8. I moved it down. And I also brought the ISO down to 800 from 1000, uh, give the camera a little bit more of a chance. Now, the camera is starting to look good. Very viable, very uh, like an uh, ADD shrunk down uh, with 4K in there. Um, you know, all this cropping stuff that they do is probably because we're at the $699. Uh, the camera is normally $899, but when I looked at uh, the price for the f2 uh, at the 22 millimeter uh, i saw the camera is 699 like wow what the heck happened 200 dollars, boom right off the top i guess they're trying to push the camera into uh, a more uh, uh, sellable position so did i do this part yes i did i think i did that just checking all right so this is what the 50 millimeter looks like now how about if we take it up a notch because uh, i'm very happy with this uh, what was I going to tell you? I was going to tell you there was something that I thought. Oh, Canon, uh, the rumor site, has a 32mm uh, 1.4 that's supposed to be in the rumors coming out for Photokina, which is in September. Now, that is going to be a really good lens. 32 is okay, though. It's going to make it like, a, you know, in 4K, it's going to make it really, really tight, like 75, 80 millimeters. However, um, uh, you know, what they need to do is add a lens like that, an f1.4 for this camera, down at maybe 13 or 14 millimeters. 
because at that point, now you're starting to cook with gas, okay? But even so, this camera is now coming into its own. I would have bought the SL1 camera, or is it the SL2 now? Yeah, the SL2 uh, over this camera, but now it's becoming a balancing point. So uh, uh, I tried to hook up with a, uh, one of the guys that commented. His name is Lewis. Hey, Lewis, up in Canada. <laughs> I tried to connect with him on the phone, but we weren't able to. I'm not all up on that savvy stuff with the FaceTime and all that stuff. So just wanted to use a regular phone, but apparently I can't call from the United States to Canada or something like that. But Lewis bought the SL2. So Lewis, keep your SL2. It's a good camera. The only reason to go for this camera, and this is where you're going to have to make up your mind, okay, is if you want to put uh, your camera on a tripod. Now Lewis is a dancer and he does really, really good. He's probably going to comment in this video. So you'll see his name um, and you can click on it and watch what he's doing with his camera because he's, he's doing what you guys want to do. Uh, we got Lewis in Canada who's got uh, a YouTube channel. We've got uh, Justin in uh, uh, Texas which is over that away. Uh, he's got a barbecue channel. We got uh, Jake uh, who's got a lawn uh, mowing channel. Uh, we got a lot of people. We got a doctor. I think we got two doctors that watch, and uh, they're all over the place. And we got a, uh, a person that shoots a lot of nature's pictures. So a lot of you guys are very much into YouTubing, which is kind of like what I'm focusing on, even though I'm pretty much a stills camera guy. <laughs> I don't know how I got sucked up into video. It's just a lot of fun. I think video is the way or the wave of the future. So anyway, back to Lewis. Lewis. If you need 4K and you can put the camera on a tripod and if you can get the F22, I mean the F22, the 22 millimeter F2 lens and it gives you enough room, that would be the reason I would switch from the SL2 is if you've got this itch that you want to move up to 4K. So uh, people are going to ask, well, why would we want to move to 4K? Why don't we do it? Why don't we do it right now? Now, if I switch to 4K right now, it's going to crop it so small, I'm going to become like a postage stamp. So I'm going to have to switch to a different lens again. This is a um, 24 millimeter uh, f1.4 L lens. Expensive mundo. Big bucks, okay? So a lot of you guys are not going to be able to afford this lens. But with the crop factor... Uh, I can't knock out my back wall, so it's like Lewis, who's a dancer, and he can uh, set the tripod up, and he can give himself more room than I can, because I'm stuck between the wall in the back and the wall in the front. <laughs> and unless I knock out a wall, I have to change to a wider lens. Now, I do have a 24 millimeter f2.8, but I have no idea where that lens is. But this is an expensive lens, so let's put this on and see how well the camera will do. It's a uh, the 24 millimeter L lens, which is 1.4, and this is, um, I think this is version 2. Yes, 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 I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, first, Mark 2, whatever they call it. This is the version 2. So let's switch now out of 1080 and go to 4K and see what happens. I am so curious to see how this camera is going to handle the 4K. All right, I'll be right back. I'm putting this lens on. And I'm taking the 50 millimeter 1.8 off, putting the 24 millimeter 1.4 bang right on that camera. Of course, there's an adapter, so it'll take this kind of uh, uh, lens on there. Be back in a minute. All right, this is the 24 millimeter 1.4. I didn't switch it to 4K yet. I wanted to show you how much space there is when I put the 24 millimeter on in 1080 mode. Gives you a lot of space, right? Uh, I also pre-focused on my little pre-focus screen, which I've got set up to be about my height. And then I put some stuff on here to make it easy to focus. All right, so let me switch this over to 4K. We're going to get 4K on a Canon camera. Oh, no 4K for you. And no 4K for you. And no 4K, no 4K, no 4K for you. All right, we are now running 4K on a Canon camera. Yay! Do I hear a round of applause? So this is the 24 millimeter lens. I switched it to 4K, which means I have to shoot at 24P. I have no other choice. Uh, and uh, this is with the camera on 
the crop sensor uh, uh, for the additional crop sensor for 4K. Uh, I'm not in autofocus mode because in 4K we don't have dual pixel focus and, and it would look really, really bad with the camera trying to focus. Do you want to see? You want me to switch it over to regular focus? You're going to laugh. All right, if you want to see, I'll do it. Okay, I just turned the focus switch to on and uh, it should still do face detection because I see a white box. Uh, let's see who does better. The, you know, Panasonic has been hammered because their contrast detection in, uh, in their focus, but they've done a lot of work with their contrast detection. So let's see what the Canon camera can do with contrast detection. So who, where would you use, is this annoying? I'm gonna switch it back, okay? Because I could just see it going in and out like crazy. And I don't like it that much. I'll just do it for a minute. I'll take a step back, okay? So you can see what it does while it tries to follow me. And then I'll come back up to the desk. And then I'll come back down this side. I'm not even gonna turn my face around. <laughs> if I turn my back to the camera, ah, what the heck? It's Saturday morning. We can, a few, we can afford a few extra frames of video uh, and let it do focusing. All right, I'm going to switch it back to manual focus because this is just painful, all right? I don't like this at all. It goes to show you uh, what I'll tell you in a minute. All right, I switched it to manual focus and preset the focus. So now we're, I can't move around from the desk, but, you know, I can stand here, I can wave my hands, and I'm actually running 4K in a Canon camera. It's not MJPEG. It really is a very good 4K. Uh, to, this is a 24 millimeter lens. Uh, my distance is basically the same distance that I would have if I was using the Sony with a 50 millimeter lens. So this Sony uh, 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 A7 Mark III sits on that exact tripod with this 50 millimeter lens and now I've got a 24 millimeter lens on there in the 4K for the M50. But, and this is the big but, we've got 4K on a Canon camera. And I think it's just a wonderful thing. Now you've got to decide if you like uh, the 4K from the Canon camera or not. That's up to you. Um, but we've gone from this little bitty pancake lens well, actually we didn't. From the uh, videos before, we went from this kit lens. Now this kit lens comes with the camera at $699. It's okay for outside use, but anything other than that, you don't even get good clear pictures outside, but it's an acceptable picture it's to some people. To some people like me, it's not acceptable. Call me picky, okay? that You can do that, all right? Now, the next thing I did, this is a $400 lens. This is an 11 to 22. Does not require an adapter. This is an M lens. Now they make a 10 to 18 lens where you do need the adapter because it's designed for uh, the mount uh, for, let's say, the Canon uh, ADD. Now, after that, we looked at the 22 millimeter f2.0 uh, and all of a sudden the camera became like, oh, well, this is now an interesting camera. What's going on here? That's what really was bad with this first kit lens is like I'm going like how bad is the are these pictures so you saw this earlier in this video the 22 millimeter f2.0 then we switched over to this lens let me get it I'm just gonna talk while I still walk out of the frame so but I'm on manual focus I don't have to worry about it okay this is the 50 millimeter 1.8 STM lens this is a hundred dollar lens uh, this is designed for uh, the full frame, and it is designed for uh, uh, the Canon 80D, and you can use it on the Canon M50 with the adapter. So the adapter, I'm using it now, I can't show it to you. Okay, so the adapter is sitting on there. So in 1080, it'll make this camera focus as if it was native to that camera. However, if you switch it to 4K, it's got nothing to do with the lens or the adapter at that point. What it's got to do with is it's just uh, the, uh, a lousy contrast detection that almost is not usable. Let's say you have a uh, camera like the, um, which is the one that Justin has, uh, G7X Mark II. So the G7X Mark II has got a built-in lens. It's kind of like a pocket camera. Uh, you know, it, it's probably the most used vlogging camera out there. It takes good pictures also, uh, but it actually focuses better than this does in 4K. 
So the 4K focusing on here is not even as good as the uh, G7X Mark II, which is pretty poor. That, that tells me that it's been domed down. <laughs> you heard of Debbie Downer? Well, this is a Canon dumb downer. So, but that's at $699. So let's see what Canon delivers when they bring us up into a higher price. Maybe a, a 4K that doesn't have an additional 1.6 crop on top of the 1.6 crop. That would be very good. Uh, or they'll allow us to use dual pixel focus. So let's say the ADD gets, comes out as a 90D. So now you got a 90D on the market. What do you think is going to be in the 90D? You think it's going to have 4K? Will it have it like the M50? Or are they going to step it up to give you a few more features that you can actually use in your daily operation? So that's why I did all the tests of this, these different lenses today, because I was really curious, because this camera is supposed to be the equivalent of an 80D, a 77D, and all the other ones. But it wasn't happening. And I'm going like, boy, is this bad? So I noticed it's all about the lens. There, that's the moral of the story. It's all about the lens. And then when you get past the, uh, what the lens can do, the functionality of the lens, then it's what Canon is going to give us or take away. Canon giveth and Canon taketh away, okay? So what they took away is the dual pixel focus on the 4K. Now, is that because they didn't think we deserved it at that price range? of $699 or $899? Or is it because they just can't do it? I want to say they just can't do it, but I know better because the C200 works perfectly, all right? But it's a $7,000 camera. So what little part costs that kind of money that they have to put into this camera? I don't know. Maybe your guess is as good as mine. Now, don't be a Canon poo-pooer because you like another system. I bought the Sony a73, the A7 Mark III, all right? That's the camera that's going to do me good right now. But everybody can't buy a $2,000 camera and then go out and buy expensive lenses. So we look at the alternatives. Now, Sony themselves has the A6500, which brings it down to, I think it's a $1,300 camera. Uh, it's got a few problems of its own. So now you look into the bigger camera, the, like the big granddaddy of Canon, and see what's available. They are basically locked us down to 1080. So now we're at 4K. Uh, I've locked on the focus, so you're not getting focus pulsing, but you're not getting Peter moving either. Peter is afraid to move. I don't really want to walk around, to tell you the truth, because if I just step back here, even though it's a 24 millimeter lens, it's not going to make any attempt to focus on me because I have it set to manual focus. However, it's out of focus, so I lose my mobility. And that brings us to the point of phones. Phones that are cameras. We're going to need to start looking into those because this Samsung 7 Edge does 4K. All right, and I, I got to see how well it does it, especially here. But I got to get the, the mount so that I can mount it up in here and stuff like that. So those of you guys that are interested in the M50, I went from a thumbs down on the camera based on this initial lens that they gave me uh, part of the kit. Boy, that shot them in the foot for me. But now with these better lenses, yes. Now the camera's a thumbs up. Actually, the camera is, is an excellent camera. Actually, the camera is a sleeper because you could do your vlogging. You can get some of these cheaper lenses, the 11 to 22, and go, okay, I'll, I'll take the quality cut, okay? Uh, and then you can also up it to a $100 uh, full frame, 50 millimeter 1.8 lens. And then if you got the bucks, you can put this 14 or $1,300 24 millimeter lens on there. And Sigma makes the same lens. Not quite half the price, but about 800 bucks, F1.4. This camera is going to sing a song. It's going to do really well. Um, but you're going to have to manual focus pretty much in 4K. So let's see what they come out with next. So that's my range of lenses. I was too curious to wait till Monday, so that's why I made this video today on a Saturday. So thanks for spending time with me on Saturday. Wait a minute. I do want to hold jingles because I want to see how uh, it does with his hair. His hair is difficult to uh, uh, autofocus on, but we're not on autofocus, but it's also difficult 
for resolution purposes. So um, let's bring Jingles. Come here, baby. Come on. Come to Peter. That's a boy. Let's pick you up. Oh, you're going to need a haircut and a bath. So here's Jingles. And this is what his hair looks like under the lights. If it's blown out or not, I can't tell because I can't see the LCD from here to there. I could turn on the, the Wi-Fi. But this is more for me. But you guys want to see him too. So he needs a bath. He needs a haircut. And I might record that and put that on the... Uh, uh, Peter Gray 4K channel. Uh, we're almost at a thousand subscribers there. Isn't that cool? Made it from like 200 subscribers to almost a thousand. We're at like 984. As a matter of fact, this channel itself is ready to cross the 25,000 mark. Thank you guys. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Okay, so I said it. But for those of you that have subscribed, that's the guys that I'm interested in. Thank you. I love everybody. Every one of you. All right. Peter Gregg, Miami, Florida, with Jingles in the Christmas Room. Catch you later. Bye-bye. You have just watched another Peter Gregg video. Something warm, human, and wonderful happens when you watch Peter Gregg. Thank you for watching. Description of all equipment used in this video, plus any notes Peter took while filming, are always placed in the description box, show more box, or down arrow thingy next to the title on mobile apps. Duly noted. Okay, I know we closed out the video, but here's a little after trailer. I decided to take the Canon M50 off. We were just uh, finished shooting this in 4K, right? So that was the last step. We stepped it up from 1080, a few different lenses, and then stepped it up to uh, 4K on the Canon. So I took the Canon off, and just as a little comparison, not really anything serious because I haven't tested this before, this is the Sony. So the desk is not where it belongs for the Sony. Uh, let me move the desk, okay, where it belongs. And I'll put this up here. There we go. All right, so I did have to step farther back with the Canon and even with that, I couldn't get much of the desk in. So now I've got the desk in here and I've got the freedom to move about the captain, the cabin. I don't know why I say captain every time. I've got the freedom to move about the captain. I did it again. Hello. It must be the water. I don't know. Let's try it again. I've got the freedom to walk about the cabin. <laughs> I, I got captain on my mind, which means I can come over here and say hi to Jingle Bells. And that clock needs winding. That weight is almost at the bottom. All right and the camera is going to follow me. And you know something? I was a dual pixel focus nut thinking Sony just can't get it. But here I am thinking Sony has got it better than the Canon now. Because when I walk around with the Canon, it doesn't do as well. Actually, the Canon will jump off. Now, don't think the Sony is perfect either, okay? Because it's not perfect. It will screw up also. There's no camera that's perfect. However, this is uh, kind of like a revelation to me because I'm in uh, thinking my mindset has been thinking that the, <laughs> the Canon dual pixel focus is the best that there is. But this Sony is actually better. Does it have its problems? Yes, but that's not what this video is about. This is just a little titty bit, bitty clippy part so that you can actually compare the Canon with the uh, Sony 4K. As a matter of fact, I'll take a, uh, a rewind, a little piece of the Canon, and put it in here right now. So here's Jingles, and this is what his hair looks like under the lights. If it's blown out or not, I can't tell because I can't see the LCD from here to there. I could turn on the, the Wi-Fi, but this is more for me, but you guys want to see. And now I'll come back to the Sony, and then you can compare them side by side. I should make a whole video on that, right? Anyway, this is, like I said, a lot of this testing today is just for me too. But I turn the camera on and I let you see me go through all this stuff. We'll do it together. There's no reason not to. You are my friends. You're like family now, right? All right. Thanks, guys. This, is, uh, this was the Jingle Bells time. And he's over there wondering what the hell happened. Shall we put Jingles in here again and see how his hair looks like compared to the, uh, uh, the Canon 4K? That's not a bad idea. All right, Jingles, come here. Yeah. There we go. All right, so this is Jingles. Where are you? There you are. Let me put my glasses so I can see you. Oh, I can see you now. 
And this is what Jingles looks like underneath the hot lights along with Peter. I'm just putting him in my arms because I like to put my, and it's focusing on my face. So I'd like it, uh, his face and my face to be kind of like on the same plane or close to it. I can stick my neck out. So anyway, that's what we look like. I'll step back and I got the, uh, the freedom to move around and it changes the lighting a little bit from the soft box, but the camera will still focus follow. All right, so now we've seen it all today. Pretty much everything, pretty much everything. All right, bye-bye.